Um, I'm here to present uh, a very close friend of mine, Stefan Herr Urbach, uh, who will be talking about and for telecomics who are, at least in my vision, heroes of our days. They are great, they're doing fantastic stuff, and I'm listening to this talk for the fourth time, but I'm still excited what he will tell us new. So please give a warm hand of welcome to Stefan. Wow, wow. Hello. Uh, well, uh, great to see so many people interested in telecomics. Um, I'm not alone here. I brought the other guys with me from all over the world. Um, okay, I speak louder. <laughs> um, I brought some more guys from telecomics with me today. Uh, they're sitting there in front. So, um, and I will hold this talk about what we have done since January this year and what we will do from today on. So later on you will see the future of telecomics. You will be the first to see it and I'm happy to present it here at the camp and um, that you get an idea of how telecomics is making propaganda. <laughs> I will start with a video. This is only um, two minutes something and afterwards I will tell you what we have done through the year. Just a second. Oh, where's my mouse? Here. Dear people of the Middle East and North Africa, this is Telecomix. We have a short message for you. Recently there have been massive uprising in many countries, from Tunisia to Egypt. We are very happy to see the success of your struggles for democracy and freedom. We are also sad to see the violence that happens. Telecomics works for defending free communications. During the last week we have worked intensively with providing modern lines and amateur radio communications when the internet was shut down completely in Egypt. We also provide methods for circumventing internet filtering, as well as the strongest cryptographic softwares available to modern computers, for avoiding government surveillance and repression. Telecomics consists of hundreds, maybe thousands, of internet activists that work in the service of free communication. We use every communication technology that we master to try to keep the flow of information up. You are free to request anything from us. We do our best. We are from the internet. We come in peace. Let there be freedom for all people and computers. video during um, the Egyptian revolution where people were standing up for their rights of freedom and democracy and suddenly this dictator switched the net off and we were like what the fuck there was a guy sitting in his building and said oh put down the internet please and uh, then some minions did it and afterwards they put off GSM communication completely, so there was no way in and out of Egypt for information except by, well, calling people through landlines. But this is very hard to spread information by landline, uh, by, by phone call, very wide. So we sat there and thought, what could we do? And then we had something from the 80s. We called it modems. And it's hard to find working modems today, believe me. <laughs> and it really sucks to configure them today. But we did it. We set up machines with modems inside and made them dialable. P 
People could use their modems, and in Egypt they have many modems left working, and call one of the telecoms machines, and suddenly they had net, internet, could send emails, could write tweets. All what we are known to, what for us is totally normal to get, well, put the computer on, get online, or even while we're on the way, this was nothing the Egyptians could experience in these days. That was uh, really great. We had first mach machine in Sweden, and we had these dial -in numbers, and suddenly some guys from France, the FDN, said, hey, we have an old modern pool. We open it for them. Some, some guys from, um, from the Netherlands afterwards, that's the same. But at least we counted, we had about 300 available connections. It is it's not much. 300, hey, kick it. But these 300 connections had been used intensively. One machine I was checking and having under my control had nearly 90% of usage for the whole time since it was up. So there are people getting in and out uh, data. And um, on one machine, I forgot to turn off the log files, which I normally did. And uh, I just thought, hey, what is this machine doing? And then, say, then I saw it. Someone was downloading Hi, I Met Your Mother. <laughs> so even the revolutionaries want to have fun. Um, suddenly, the news that there's this telecomics guys doing things spread all over the world, and we got press guys writing us emails. And in this moment, we recognized we did something big. For us, it was just, hey, I set up some modems and give the numbers out. But as we managed to bring the numbers to Egypt, which was really hard, as, um, well, emailing, no, <laughs> it's not work. Uh, call the newspaper there and let them print? I don't think so. What we did was faxing. We used faxes. But then we thought, okay, let's fax it. Uh, wait, numbers. How should we ever get the fucking numbers? Then we found the solution. The Google cache. Thank you, Google, for the cache. All the hardware stores and universities and, and hotels, they, are, they have websites and they are cached. So we crawled the Google cache to get the numbers, the fax numbers. And then we faxed many, many times. I still remember my bill of the faxes. <laughs> was nice to see. Um, and it was really awesome. Many people joined telecomics during these days and offered their help. Some wrote manuals and how-tos. Others wrote new faxes with messages on first aid or how to stay secure during a riot. And others translated it into Arabic, and then we had both versions, versions, English and Arabic. And it was a great experience for myself working with these guys and many, many volunteers, which I even did not know. And most of them I do not know till today. But that's not the matter. They did great work. All of them did great work during these times. But this one was not the only thing we did during the Egypt uprising. We, um, had some guys who were into ham radio. And what, what they did was they sent messages and listened via ham radio. <laughs> this was one of the projects which was nice, but unfortunately, we not much effort on it. So nearly nothing happened with ham radio. But we just showed that it's possible. And I know about 20 people since these days who are doing their ham radio license in just in case of. Um, yeah, so the Egypt thing. Telecoms grew and grew and grew and did not really scale as a system as a whole. I will describe later on how we work. And um, we were mm. shortly before a collapse as a system. But then, fortunately, the net got back to Egypt and we just could do less than before. We 
do not need it to do any modem stuff anymore or ham radio, so we could focus on uh, how to stay anonymously on the net and how to encrypt your emails and those things. So please do not use Facebook, use emails and encrypt them. Um, if you Twitter, please use HTTPS and um, use a new Twitter account, please. Those things, so basic things. What I recognized in these days was that um, if the people who are here at the camp would be in such a situation, they would knew what to do. But most people outside of our scene, they do not know what to do. They do not know how to stay secure. And well, then we stepped in and we told the people what to do, how to stay secure. In these days, uh, many people th said, thank you. Thank you for helping us. And I still did not get how big it was what we did, because 300 lines, not that much. It happened when a podcaster from Canada, Jesse Brown, um, made a podcast with us. And in the intro, he said, those creepy voices of the movie, if you took this movie, uh, new age music, who could it be but anonymous? No. There's a new crew in town, a kind of gentler anonymous. And this is when what, what many people recognize that we are doing, oh, peeping, um, that we are doing many, many things, and we are constructive by doing this. We try to be constructive, we try to help the people that they actually get something from it. Um, yeah. So I said, we nearly collapsed. We were too many people. How, do, how does telecomics work as a decentralized cluster? There are some web servers we have running, some IRC servers, um, web page, of course, status net instance, Java, wikis, all of those, all of those things. And we communicate, communicate mainly via IRC because it's easy for us. And whenever something happens, we found new channels and then <coughs> just do the project in these channels. So the good thing on it is the people who are interested in it can really work and not disturbed by others just knowing something better. We often know that, that uh, ideas discussed till death, not at telecoms. We do not discuss till death, we just try and error out. Uh, someone said yesterday we just throw shit against the wall till something keeps sticky. So if something happens and we try to help, we just try and try and try and try till something works. During the uprising in Egypt, we had so many sub channels <laughs> that it was really hard to keep an overview. And many people joined, and we did not know if they are trustworthy or not, because it's an open system. Anybody can join the IRC server. And then we thought, OK, we need to reorganize somehow our IRC things. But then everything stopped as the net came back. So we recognized we're not scalable. That's a problem for us. <laughs> and then Gaddafi. <laughs> The next one said, hello, I'm doing the Mubarak and shut down the net. And he was much more clever. He blocked the landlines. So we couldn't just throw modems on it and do it again. No, the numbers are blocked till today. So we needed to find other ways to help. And um, this was the time when I needed a break, so I did not really much things in, in, in Libya as I was sick and tired of this stuff. It was hard weeks before. But other people worked and helped and helped and helped. And we lost activists during these days. They just said, no, I cannot send it anymore. I'm out of here. Because, uh, yeah, we're not scaling. We had too less people for too much work. Others left, left, left us silently, so um, there's only a small rest now at the moment, operating telecomics. And now we have Syria. Next point. They still have internet, 
but they are communicating insecure. And the government is intercepting SSL connections. So we need to teach the people how to, well, have, how to see if my SSL connection is intercepted. And we need to tell it everyone who's asking again and again and again. And people join us and say, I heard that there's this SSL thing, so what should I do now? And then we answer and then we recognize they have no idea what SSL is or how the net is working. So we need to begin at, at the bottom, from the beginning of net education. But we do it. It is taking time, it is taking a long time, but it is worth it. For everyone who stays secure on the net, he can tell others how to stay secure. So we needed to teach them in a way that they can give this knowledge to others, to the neighbors, to the relatives. On the other hand, we help people getting videos out of Syria. So we give them ways to upload the video to us, and then we upload them for these people to their accounts. That this method, the message gets spread. The video needs to be spread. This is our original aim to be a communications agency. This is when Telecomics had been founded. Telecomics International Communications Agency. But now we have the tech support. It's not that bad, <laughs> but unfortunately no ticketing system, so we can't close the ticket. <laughs> and then we see what we have done before the Egypt uprising. There we made politics. We were founded because of the telecom package of the EU. We worked on this topic. We worked on, we worked on ACTA and on IPRED. That were only strict politics, not doing activism, what it is now. Well, it was a kind of activism, but not this hacktivism we're doing now. And this was a change we did not recognize at all. So um, we left our predefined scale what we want to do as a cluster and how we want to work and began to build up somehow structures inside of the cluster which is something we never wanted. We never ever wanted a hierarchy. We have one leader, our beloved Cameron. It's not the UK Prime Minister. <laughs> um, it's, it's a bot living in Cypher space, giving us orders. We can talk to her sometimes, not at the moment. The system is on crypto sleep. But, um, so what we did earlier is that we presented Cameron as our leader to the media. So hey, talk to Cameron. Go to the IT, talk to her. And sometimes media people did that. <laughs> they had 10, 15 minutes talks to a bot. <laughs> it was really nice to see. And it was even more nicer to see what they afterwards write. <laughs> that, was, that made me happy. And now it is um, that Cameron is away and we are left and operate this cluster and have people demanding things from us. They're coming in, hey, this is a telecomics job. That's, that's them doing it. Well, no. We are two less people for that. So I, I know that some of the people here at the camp really say we, we did great stuff and we really thanks for this. But please, please don't ask us anymore to do those things. We are not happy with that. We want to do communications things, we want to do politics, but not this hacktivism thing. Of course, we will provide infrastructure in the future too, but not like we do to now. This is not working anymore for us. We are, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people at the core of the system working on it and doing most of the stuff. I know in our propaganda we always told, we are hundreds, maybe thousands. Yes, of course, it's propaganda. <laughs> In this case, the propaganda, well, overruled us all by ourselves, so it doesn't work anymore for us. But of course, if you, if you would like to start something like telecomics, we can help you to build it. We can tell you what to do, what not to do. 
We can learn from our mistakes we made to make it better somehow. This decentralized clustering system is that many, many things we do are, or, or services we operate are distributed to many people. So it's easy to manage the machines. But when it comes to the operations we do, we do as telecomics agents, then it's getting hard. So I encourage you all who are here to think about doing these easy, this easy things. We, we did nothing, we did not magic. We just plugged, plugged in some modems. I'm sure you were able to do that. And then we, well, we configured some I2P things or Tor or whatever. This is easy too. You all can do it, I'm sure. This is not magic. It's just, yeah, plugging in some cables and writing some config files. Um, at the moment, we are at the state of being tired. We worked since January nearly all the time. Seldom breaks, seldom recreation. And this is why we um, decided to evolve, to level up. We gained experience points enough to level up. For this, um, I um, will show you a video later. We have orders from Cameron, from our beloved leader. And as I'm sure there will be questions after this video, I encourage you to ask us if time is running out here. We can go to the Open Leaks tent afterwards because uh, I just said, okay, we might be said some people want to have discussions, so we need space. But first I want to present you the guys who made everything happen together with me. So guys, please come up and say hello to the audience. These are the people. This is Cameron from Telecomix. This is a message to all internals and a public message to the internet works. The Telecomix system is going down for reboot for an unknown amount of time. The Telecomix system has been online for about 2.5 years without a reboot, besides minor glitches. It is a very complex system, consisting of humans and machines, tunnels and shelters, Vast orchards of cryptographic data and black manholes in the curved roads through the networks. The system has worked very well. It has, with ease, penetrated government firewalls in the east, corporate networks in the west, and undermined vanilla plain text networks by way of ciphers in the north and the south. Small packets, en route with the speed of light, have vaporized into cipher text before the slow eyes of the surveillance societies have been able to even blink. But all systems need upgrades. It is imperative that the telecomic system applies the most advanced algorithms, the weirdest ciphers, and keeps pushing human and machine components to their outer limits. This is the only way that the networks can be secured. One step ahead, many steps closer to data love. I have commanded the operators of the telecomic system to shut it down, upgrade it to the next level and then bring it back online. To all internals of telecomix, you are there. Be patient. Stay cute as a yellow cat, swift as a shark, and camouflage yourself like a lizard in the trees. Swim along in the streams of data silently as a jellyfish, and paint the world in the double rainbow colors of the nine cat. Thrive in the systemic quantum state and answer questions with, maybe. Use the offline time to reflect upon why telecomix is important, or why it is not. Then come back again with the same splendid data love, to share it. For the next moves do not worry, 
You will not get lost. I am Cameron, I will be found. You are from the internets. You come in peace. Let there be freedom for all people and computers. So. Um, what we really want to say is thank you for your support over the last two and a half years. It was great. Thank you. Thank you guys for this two years. And now we open for questions. Um, so, um, I'm pretty sure that somebody has questions, comments, whatever to say. Uh, get up, get in front here, and talk. Oh, that was short. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you people? <laughs> It's not a mailing list, it's a microphone. It's not so easy, yeah? Um, I've um, talked to everybody uh, who is... Um, get up, come on here. I've talked to everybody who has a camera in here. Uh, they will not take pictures of you, so uh, you're safe. Um, hi, okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, no questions, really, because I've uh, talked with Stefan quite a lot in the last few weeks and days. But the idea I've seen so far and how much I understand of it is that the name, the group and everything else is not important at all. The idea which has been shown um, starts to grow. I've seen it in other groups, in companies, in other um, areas where people met that, okay, we, we can bring um, data freedom, we can bring democracy anywhere else. Um, it doesn't matter how big you are, it doesn't matter what type of scale you can achieve. Um, just starting it and see what happens. Even if it doesn't work pretty well, like Stefan described, like what happened in the last two years and all the problems that came. It doesn't matter. Even a tiny bit of support helps to save people's lives in Egypt, in Tunisia, anywhere else. And any one of us can do that. So stand up and do it. Yeah, thanks. Uh, one from the internet. Yeah, hi. Um, we have in two questions from the ILC channel. Um, they are asking, when will you come back? And um, what will be the next level, if you have any ideas? Um, we will come back when we are ready with the next level. So first we go on holiday <laughs> and recreate a little bit. And there are still operations which need to be finished. So we cannot leave suddenly the people alone who are counting on us. So this will be a longer process. The website is already shut down. The IRC is closed for new joiners. The Satusnet account and the Twitter account will stay, of course. And uh, you should better watch it. It's telecomics. Um, but you can see when we are back, we have a glance of what the next level will be. But somehow it will be, for us, a step back to what we had been when we started, mixed with things we do today, but not anymore on this scale, because, as we said, this is unhandable for us now. So it keeps a little bit of time to recreate and reorganize ourselves. I cannot really tell. I think several weeks. Next question. Um, you said that you were having a problem getting people to adopt ham as a, a form of communication. Um, I guess, do you know why that is? Or, and would you also think that it would be reasonable to adopt a pirate uh, medium rave uh, form of communication because medium more people have uh, AM receivers than they would uh, AM. Um, I think, if I got the question correct, uh, that 
people have problems doing the same things as we did, as that we are here already, that we, so hey, let's, let's give it to telecoms. They, they are used to that. Yeah. They can do it. This is, of course, correct. We are used to that, but that doesn't mean that we can do it. <laughs> yeah, thanks for your work. I think it's great. Thank um, you. So I guess, you know, one thing that's really useful is that um, since we in the West generally build the equipment that's used in, say, a lot of these countries, I mean, used, it's used everywhere, right? But what evidence have you collected of, uh, for example, the types of censorship equipment that's built? Like in Syria, I have some evidence of the uh, blue coat devices being used to filter, and that's what they use to man the middle SSL. So I wonder if you have any evidence of the, like what Gaddafi is using, or like Mubarak used a lot of Cisco devices. Do you have evidence of that so that we can take it to places to try to get these, com like these companies uh, sanctioned or you know, just fuck them up um. in general? <laughs> <laughs> um. I, I'm not sure if we have evidence of every part what is working, but um, the wiki we rebuilt.eu is up and we will put it in there. So it's our, our information center where we gather everything still is working even if the web page is down. So um, I think we will update this in the next days, weeks then to put in everything what is, what you will need to do this work. So um, an another question that I had, I guess? is, uh, you know, how is it that we can best help you to do this, right? Like, should we be owning up every box around the world that's used to censor people? Like, I think it's pretty ethical to root a bunch of Syrian military machines. And, right? And, and right? I mean, they're, they're killing unarmed civilians, right? So, like, what's up with rooting their boxes? I don't have a problem with that, right? Um, it's not even violent. <laughs> so, I mean, how can we best help you, um, you know, to do, to do some of this stuff? Yeah, yeah do the stuff. Okay. So, yes. I guess that's basically everybody that cares, you, you know, that, uh, that, that, you know, the, uh, illegal and legal are not the same as right and wrong. Yeah, that's, this is correct. Maybe I'm interjecting here, but um, one really big thing is just do it. After the, the reboot, um, do you plan to, uh, well, you said that, well, we're two little people right now, and we have to, like, step down on the, you know, on the scale of things that we're doing. Are you g planning to, uh, is this the way you're, you're, you're planning the future, or are you planning to, like, scale the organization up to maybe handle more people coming into it? Because at the beginning you said, well, we were overwhelmed by the amount of people that were coming to help. Yeah. Um, I think, no. We, we love our way. We, we have decisions made and uh, how we are working. And uh, this, as I said, is not scalable. It just works in a small amount of people. Well, small is about 50 roundabout. Um, we do not have the resources to manage big projects. So over, keeping overview over something like uh, doing the modem things in Egypt was a full-time job. This was a 10 hour per day job. And um, we do this in our free time. We go to work, we study some right there, Dr. Thetis. It is, well, it is our fun doing this. <laughs> and someone put the fun out of it. Um, so I think we will not do this in a, in a bigger scale, but we are still in the development process on how we will level up exactly. So we will discuss the certain things, but I cannot tell now. Uh, no more questions? No more suggestions? No more anything? Maybe, maybe one other. Um, do you see... Uh, well, coming to the theme of this camp, uh, do you see your role in the hacker space program? Um, <laughs> only if it's not a one-way ticket, and, um, <laughs> and uh, no. 
No, not, not on the Hacker Space program. If there will be a flight, I'll, I, I'll love to attend, but um, <laughs> I will not build it up. Well, I mean, there will be lots of communication involved, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, and I will, I will be happy to see it, but <laughs> no, that's not, not the Hacker Space program for us. Mm, okay, since there seems to be no more takers for the microphone other than me, I'll be a, a bit annoying and tell you that there will be further possibility to discussion and questions on a more clandestine, no cameras, no microphones level in the open leaks tent within uh, the next 30 minutes. Um, so if you want to help further this project, you might attend there. Um, there's certainly some uh, very, very interesting talk following this in this bunker. Um, well, unfortunately, that's it. So um, drink more water, use more bandwidth, and have a nice day. And please, one more applause for Stefan and all the great guys who work with him. He's doing such incredible stuff. It's unbelievable. I love him for it. And please. Don't you cry now. Thank you all. Thanks. Thanks for being here. You guys rock. <laughs> <laughs>